Hello everybody and welcome back to Life is Strange. This is the remastered version. Okay, what's Warren want? Ah, oh, should you blow the lock, Unabomber? Oh please, I just want to see if you knew your explosives and to see your incredible artwork. Oh, these are all the photos from each one we got. Okay, from this one we got... Got a few, didn't get all of them. Oh god, there's loads I missed there. The heck? God, there's loads. Oh my god, there's so many you can get. I didn't get many on this either. God, there's so many you can take. Okay. Okay, so where did we go? 41. Uh, Enter the Blackwell Ninjas. As I stealthily made my way out of the hall, I passed by Kate's door and saw all the nice messages from other students. Too bad most of Blackwell didn't care when they passed around the video and bullied her to that roof. Everybody always cares when it's too late. At least Kate will see that people are on her side, finally. Hope I can visit her when all this blows over. Maybe that's not a good choice of words. Damn, um, that was close. I was going so well until I go outside and of course it was Principal Wells of all people blocking the way, the one person I least wanted to see. I wasn't ninja enough for him to say, yeah, he busted me, but I finally got to see that the gossip was true for a change. Uh, no he didn't, he didn't bust us, we snuck past him. Mate, okay, I don't understand that because he didn't bust us at all. Principal Wells was shit-faced, he didn't even try to hide, in fact he was a lot cooler drunk than sober. I can see why he's so confused dealing with Kate's family and the Prescott and David Madsen. He still acts suspicious and gives me way too much chewed. As he would say, nobody says, says that seriously. But I can see that he's under a lot of pressure so much that he's so wasted he can't even use his keys at midnight. Sure he was in my way, but he was no match for my rewind power. After all, I had to go and meet Chloe. Bad Max. Even though I thought I was in full ninja mode, Chloe still scared the shit out of me, which pissed me off considering what I've been going through some time. She's so damn insensitive to other people's feelings. She wants all my attention for her and finding Rachel, and she gets all but her if I don't have time for her. Obviously I have time in hand, but I can't stay mad at her for long, and she was so damn excited about having the keys to the main building. Honestly, I was pretty amped up too. Even more so when we went to the front of the building and spied on Victoria talking smack about me. Shocked. And worse, actually trying to blackmail Mr. Jefferson to pick her photo for the Every Everyday Heroes contest. She's freaking unreal. I give Mr. Jefferson major respect for telling her to get lost, even though she deserved to be expelled for pulling that crap. This is her priority after what happened with Kate. I just don't understand Victoria. No matter how I try, she's already rich, pretty, and a good photographer. Why well, try so hard and hurt so many to mi manipulate everything already in your favour? I just hope that's not what I'm doing with my rewind power. A little bit, yeah. Yes, there's something incredibly awesome about breaking into your own school at the witching hour. Although Chloe was technically right, how can we break in with a key? Never mind that it was a stolen key from the school's head of security. Anyway, the Blackwell Ninja stroke again. So cool to stalk the halls when it's dark and quiet, even when so many terrible things happening all around us. Felt like Chloe and I were walking towards the centre of a great cosmic mystery, something bigger than any of us. But we kind of suck at master spies since we didn't have a key for the principal's office. No worries with my rewind power at hand and of course Dr Warren Graham. He came through with a bitchy mini bomb made of sodium, what the fuck ever. I probably learned more putting those ingredients together than the entire semester so far. Sorry Mrs Grant, Warren is the star student here. He tries so hard to help, maybe too much. But what's wrong with that these days? I'm so grateful he's on my team. Okay. I did say I'd do these, so that's what we're going to do. My name is Max Collifield, and ever since I was a little kid, I knew I wanted to be a photographer. I've always seen the world through my own lens finder. Maybe it's a way for me to be a part of the world, but at a safe distance. 
For some reason, I was always drawn to old analog camera gear rather than digital tech. I love all kinds of styles and techniques, but for me, the instant camera selfie is the one I love most. I don't care if people make fun of me or not. I'm in great company, right? And now I've come all the way back to my childhood home to study photography at Blackwell Academy, a private school for 12th grade seniors. On a scholarship even, I originally left behind Chloe, my best friend forever, at least until I left without talking to her once in five years. And it feels so weird to be back here without seeing her yet. So I'm 18 now, an official adult, even though I don't always feel so wise or mature, and I'm ready to begin a whole new life here with retro camera at my side. Mark Jefferson's the next one, yeah. Not only is Mark Jefferson one of the best photographers in the world, he's also my teacher and one of the reasons I wanted to come to Blackwell. How often do you get to be mentored by one of your inspirations? I've always loved his deco, his deco and golf star and he's so versatile with all of his incredible print and advertising work still. Jefferson can be a bit condescending. He's pretty hip for his age but kind of aloof and sometimes pretentious. He has his smug smile when he thinks he's right. But I do think he's preparing us for how tough it is to be a full-time artist. He acts like he understands my own work and obsession with analog images. He really wants me to enter a photo in this Everyday Heroes contest, but I've done a good job of avoiding that. The winner gets to fly to San Francisco to represent Blackwell Academy and get national exposure. I'd like to think my work could be good enough to win it, and I'm honoured Jefferson even bugs me about the contest. I've forgotten if I've ever seen Kate Moss smile or laugh in the past month. She's really sweet and nice, even though the other students make fun of her abstinence campaign. Even if they act immature, everybody at Blackwell are seniors, not high school freshmen. She gets a lot of shit, in fact. I know she's involved in a lot of religious groups, but she doesn't preach to me, so I don't care. But she's been extra quiet and introverted the past couple of weeks. She looks like she's in zombie mode. I wish I could help her. But I can barely help myself. I wonder if all that bullying has worn, her, has worn her down. I can see how it would. I have to make an effort to talk to her more often. Maybe invite her to tea or a movie. Although she's an adult, I bet she's not allowed to watch R-rated movies. Films. Then there's Victoria Chase, the elite of Blackwell Academy and a total bitch. And I hate saying that, I just don't know why somebody who's so rich and beautiful needs to be so fucking mean. 18 year old at a prestigious academy should be evolving into artists and scholars, not reality show contestants. Victoria does everything for maximum drama. She actually wastes her time calling me out in class and taunting Kate Marsh. For reals? I wish her parents could see her in action. They'd take off that trust fund fast. Then again, she's in the Vortex Club and they seem to own the school, so maybe that's why she doesn't give a shit. The odd thing is that she does know art and photography. She can even say all those French names that break my tongue. Her work is a little cold, but she has a good eye. She also has an eye for Mr. Jefferson, which is so obvious that I'm embarrassed for her. She does everything but sit in his lap. He keeps his distance, though. We can all tell she's trying to win the Everyday Heroes contest. I'm sure it drives her crazy when there's somebody she can't buy or seduce. Ha! Huh? Just when I thought Victoria Chase would be the worst of my social problems, now I have to deal with Nathan Prescott. But I guess he was the one who triggered my crazy rewind power by shooting that girl in the bathroom. He's 18 and already a scary fucking prick. I guess I have a little advantage on Nathan by being able to manipulate time, but if he shoots me, I might not be able to reverse anything. I have to be careful around him, especially since he's obviously got friends in high places, as his family's last name is practically branded on every building here at Blackwell. His money against mine. On one hand, I do kind of feel bad for Nathan because he doesn't seem to be in control, like he's doped up or over-medicated. On the other, he's an asshole who nobody, who nobody has called out, and he almost killed, did kill, a girl on campus. Should I go straight to the police? What do I say about my rewind power? I could say anything. I just have to watch my own back, and from now on, school days. Whoa, I swear that security guard is the biggest ass here, and that's saying a lot. He always treats everybody like they've committed to cr committed a crime or they're about to commit one. He grilled me in the hall today, and I thought he was going to arrest me. I don't know how I don't know much about him, but I heard he was kicked out of the army or something. So of course, he would end up at Blackwell Academy in charge of security. Aren't you supposed to feel? I don't know. Secure on campus? Bro dude swaggers everywhere with that badge and gun like he's looking to taste somebody. He would make a good photo portrait of authority though. Who does a guy like that marry? 
I feel sorry for his family. It would be like living in a barracks. Should I? Just another person I have to avoid at Blackwell. Collect them all. Boom. Yeah, obviously these are done before we've actually figured out that she he's married to Joyce and he's the stepdad of Chloe and all that. So a lot of this will be out of sync with where we are, but I wanted to read them all in one episode, so that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, Principal Wells. I don't know what to think about this guy. I can't figure out where Prince Wells is coming from. For some reason he seems to be suspicious of me at all times. Who knew I was that much trouble? He wanted to know why I was zoning out in the halls. I stuttered like a fool. He has so much power over my scholarship, I get uber nervous around him. I've seen him laughing with other teachers and students, so I know he must have a problem with me. He also seems a little stressed out. I would be too if I had to oversee Blackwell and all its trauma. I thought I smelled alcohol on his breath, but that could have been his cologne, right? But I remember my first meeting in his office and he was so nice and made me feel like I was becoming part of a special world. He said he hoped I would become a great photographer and someday return the favour to Blackwell. I thought it was a bit of a wishful thinking but it made me feel good. I just need to lay low around him until I can somehow gain his trust. I knew if I gave Warren my phone he would blow it up for science. He wants his flash drive back after letting me borrow it for less than a week. He told me to watch everything because he has tons of cool TV shows and films on there. Thank God it wasn't porn and I'm thankful for Warren. He's like a real friend and we share a lot of the same interests. He loves science but he really understands art and appreciates great photography. Even though he says he loves my pictures I can't tell if he's just being nice. Warren is a geek but he definitely lets you know where he stands. I don't think he would ever lie to me. It feels good to have at least one strong ally the same age here. And he makes me smile. Then there's Chloe Price. What do you say to your best friend after five years of silence? After finding out you saved her life in a bathroom? Nothing. I feel so lame for not staying in touch or even text. I have no idea how to process seeing Chloe like this again. For one thing, she looks so similar but so different. She's all grown up now, but it doesn't seem like she's only one year older than me. I absolutely love her blue hair and punk clothes. It makes sense she would become a rebel. She still kind of looks like a pirate, except one who stage dives. I know she's angry with me because of her body language. I'm glad I can still see this, the old Chloe in there. Or is that the young Chloe? I'm sure she's still messed up about her dad dying. I would be too. That was a terrible time for Chloe and Joyce. I feel bad because I wonder if I was happy to move away just to avoid the grief. Speaking of grief, grief, it's clear she's all mixed up with Nathan Prescott's shit. I have no idea what's going on between them, but I'm going to find out, no matter what. Where is Rachel Amber? Even though Blackwell Academy feels so remote and tranquil, you still get sad reminders of a reality like missing person posters, literally wallpapered all over campus. I already know her name through osmosis. I guess she was a popular student here and vanished six months ago. Rachel has a great picture on her missing person poster. She looks posed and pretty like a model. Of course I wonder who took the photo. Did she run away from home? I'd like to hope so. For her sake, it's so depressing. And I feel awful for her parents. What a shitty thing to go through. Sigh. No matter how much Blackwell seems like a secret bubble of knowledge, you can't escape the real world. Talking to Joyce Price after five years was almost as intense as seeing Chloe again, especially right back in ye old Two Wells Diner. That clinking of silverware and the smell of sizzli sizzling bacon rewound me back to being a kid, hanging out there with my parents for breakfast. I remember always smiling at Chloe even in mischief. Doubt she smiles at hijinks now, but, she's, but they still banter like mother and daughter. I moved to Seattle so soon after William died that I never saw how it affected Joyce. I'm glad she's not pissed at me for being selfish and never looking back. I still remember the last time Chloe and I saw him alive. I wonder how jo often Joyce relives that day. That's the worst kind of rewind. One you can't control. But if I could go back to that moment, what would I do? I can only imagine how Joyce ended up with David Madsen. Talk about opposites. You can tell she loves him disturbing. Oh, you can tell him you can tell she loves him disturbing as that sounds maybe she just wanted a more structured life for herself obviously it didn't work out that way with chloe hope they both treat her right joyce deserves the best 
I'll never forget Frank, if only because he's the first and last person I will ever aim a gun at. How did Chloe end up in this sketchy drug dealer's orbit? The weird thing is that when I first saw him threatening Chloe in the junkyard, I was more shocked how uncreepy he looked. I expected some try-hard gangster, but he looked more like a dumpster diving troll, which I guess he kinda is since we were on his turf. Testing out my rewind skills for Chloe's amusement. Though he didn't look like a serial killer, his vibe, aura, energy, uh, whatever, was bad. I could literally feel the hair on my arms prickling. He wanted the money Chloe owed him, so it didn't make sense he would hurt her, but I wasn't going to take a chance. So yes, I actually threatened him with David's gun. Ridiculous, fortunately none of us ended up like reservoir dogs, and I saw that maybe Frank isn't as scary as I thought. But I don't want Chloe near him ever again. Since he was wearing one of Rachel Amber's bracelets for what the fuck reasons, I doubt Chloe will be partying with him anymore. But he's at the top of our suspect list now. There you go. That's all of them. I've just gone through them, it still hasn't ticked them off. Okay. Does that only take them off? There we go. That is all. Right, let's continue with the game, right? Search. This pretty much sums up Kate. Shy and sweet. And in the wrong place. Student information sheet, Kate Beverly Marsh, GPA 3.9. Kate Marsh represents the very best of the students at Blackwell Academy. Her GPA is consistently outstanding along with her optimistic attitude and quiet work ethic. Her extracurricular activities with the Meals on Wheels program has been acknowledged on Key Bay 7 News. And her diverse religious studies group has been a welcome addition to the wide range of student-led spiritual programs at Blackwell. She also has one of the best attendance records in the school's history. Principal Wells, as the school nurse, I should inform you that Kate Marsh appears to have experienced some sort of recent emotional or physical trauma. I spoke to her briefly and she was upset but vague and refused to talk further with me. I think it's important that we keep our eyes on her and make sure she's not under duress from our other classmates, as is my suspicion regards Anne-Marie Balenci. Update at present time, there is a security investigation into a controversial video allegedly featuring Kate Marsh at a Vortex Club party that has been uploaded onto the internet without her knowledge or alleged consent along with her claim of being taken to the hospital during the party see the attached file so they knew about this they knew about this and they still didn't do anything about it that's really bad he's a two more files to go. bad he's a very bad principal doesn't matter if it's corrupted or not he should not have allowed it to happen it happened knowing knowing what he knew looks like an oil paintings bill awful look at this pile Tumbleweeds. Weird. This asshole has a spotless record. GPA 3.7 for Nathan Joshua Prescott. Brief summary. Nathan Prescott continues his family's historical legacy at Blackwell Academy with a stellar academic record and a variety of record extracurricular activities, including work with the Arcadia Bay Homeless Fund. Nathan is also popular with students and faculty. He stands as a proud representation of Blackwell. Wow. Like I'm not going to read my own personal file. Student Information Chief Max in Collifield, GPA 2.8. Brief summary, Max, as she prefers to be called, is considered a quiet, attentive student with much potential for her photography. Her GPA fluctuates and she hasn't acknowledged she should be doing better. Her teachers back up her quiet intelligence. Though some complaints find her too nervous and nosy, some faculty members would like Max to speak up more in class and be more assertive. Others would like her to be less so. But this is a common student suggestion rather than a specific recommendation update. Despite some recent confrontation with Blackwell security, Max showed herself to represent the very best of Blackwell Academy by stopping fellow student Kate Marsh from jumping off the dormitory roof today. At this time, there is an ongoing police faculty investigation, but Max's heroism is undisputed. This file is going to be so spotless, a projectile vomit. Victoria Meribeth Chase, GPA 3.9. Brief summary, Victoria Chase is the gold standard for Blackwell Academy, a student with consistently high GPA and extracurricular activities that reflect her career goals in photography. Victoria also receives high marks from faculty for her devotion to the Vortex Club, along with an organisations devoted to Blackwell spirit and history. She's also a bitch. I have to make sure Warren doesn't have a criminal background. 
GPA4. It's one of the smartest ones, isn't it, Warren? Brief summary, Warren is considered an exemplary student and represents a long tradition of excellence in science at Blackwell. He has the gift of all curse of gab, depending on the faculty. Some have accused him of playing science pranks, but this is not confirmed by his science teacher, Mrs. Grant. Miss Grant, we hope Warren focuses academic vision and continues towards the bright future. Let's nab this last file, Sherlock. Always wanted... Rachel doesn't seem so troubled based on all this. But there's not much here about the police investigation. Rachel Dawn Amber are update. Unfortunately, Rachel Amber has stopped attending class for the past month and she's left no contact with students or faculty for the past month. Her parents are at the present unaware of her whereabouts and Blackwell hopes her quick return to continue her academic excellence. Brief summary, Rachel Amber is the Queen Alyssa student representation of Blackwell Academy. She excels in all of her studies and extracurricular activities, which are numerous. Popular with both students and faculty, she has the de facto qualities of scholarship and leadership that is a hallmark of Blackwell's legacy. Her diverse goals include a career in international law and fashion mod modelling. There is no doubt that Rachel will achieve all of her dreams and act Blackwell as the fulcrum. Peter Wells, this is Lieutenant Chris Rossi. Just wanted to let you know that Rachel Lambert's investigation has officially been closed on our end. We always hope for that one magic clue, but once again, Arcadia Bay covers up another secret. We always keep our eyes and ears open, but that's all we can do from now. Thanks for all your help, Lieutenant Chris Rossi. Man. I don't blame the principal for expelling Chloe. Bad Chloe. Student information. Wow, GPA 1.7. Chloe Price is a problematic student at Blackwell despite the best efforts of the faculty and administration to guide her academically. Chloe does little homework and is often willfully belligerent to her teachers. She has caused numerous class disruptions with inappropriate comments and rude gestures to fellow students. She was recently suspended for spray painting graffiti in the parking lot. Even though Chloe is an intelligent student with potential, she chooses to squander it on empty rebellion against a non-mandatory institution. Chloe Price is no longer a student at Blackwell Academy. I think we found everything in here. I should go join Chloe now. I guess being a bully is in the Prescott DNA. Pitbull Wells, it's come to my attention the Prescott family's crest has been removed from the library wall for no apparent reason. This local historical crest is required as per the donation terms to the library, or the donation will be rescinded, among others, to the school. Along with that, I understand that the tragic event involving Miss March gives you pause, but I would suggest that cancelling Thursday's party is not conductive to the can-do spirit of Blackwell Academy. I expect you to reconsider and come to the same ob obvious conclusion. Thank you, sure, Prescott. They're jerks, aren't they? They are like the worst people possible. Just read us it. Let's have a look at the letter. That is so cool that my signature actually counted. Go, Miss Grant. Dear Miss Grant, as principal of Blackwell Academy, it is my glad, happy, fortunate duty to inform you that your petition to block the installation of a new surveillance system has received enough signatures for the school to reject the plan. It is not my policy to take sides in these matters as we encourage the faculty and student body to participate in their school's operation. However, I did recognise the controversial nature of these cameras and shared your concern for possible invasions of privacy. Thank you for your passion and for inspiring Blackwell students to make their voices heard. Hope they will feel empowered by the outcome of your petition. Best, Principal Wells. You're not so tacky up close. Say hello to my little friend. Say goodnight to the bad guy. Max, you better come check out these files. Nathan accuses Rachel of bringing drugs on campus, and my step troll went along because he thinks Rachel was a bad influence on me. Assholes. If David is teaming up with Nathan Prescott, that's a bad sign. Nathan Prescott III. Ooh, he's so money. And you know the Prescotts dropped major bank to bury Nathan's real file. Look, it reads like a rap sheet. Bad grades, teacher complaints, secret probation. But I was expelled? The Prescotts always get their money's worth. Check out that note. Open it. It's just some crazy drawing. It's not a drawing. Look. Rachel in the dark room. Rachel in the dark room. Over and over. That's it. That's 
fucked up. What does this even mean? Nathan is truly psychotic. I know he has something to do with Rachel missing. Whoa, listen to this. David M. always asks what's going on in my head. David M. always helps me follow those he follows. It's pretty cryptic. No, it sounds like they formed some sort of weird team, the Super Hebros. Jesus. David was stalking Kate, hassling me, and now we know he was all over Rachel, too. Oh, we are so going into his garage files. Plus, I'm getting a little paranoid in here. We got our info. Let's bail. But maybe we shouldn't leave without a gift. No, you are not taking the cozy chair. Max, do your powers include mind reading? Or did you just rewind because I tried to steal the chair? Shit, I'm confused. It's the powers of best friendship. I know how you roll. We should definitely get out of here. We pressed our luck enough. Hello, what have we here? Holy shit! Jackpot! Cha-ching! Wow, sir. That's a lot for the handicapped fund. Dude, there's $5,000 here. I could pay Frank back tonight. This'll chill him out after our knife showdown yesterday. Are you gonna make a big issue out of this? Or just rewind and take the greenbacks for yourself? I hope you do that instead of lecturing me. Yeah, let's just take it so we can get her off our back and Frank get Frank off our about back. Rachel and he might talk if he's been paid. Yep. Right? You are super max. Makes it easier. And with the leftover dough, I'll take you on a road trip to Portland for the day. We'll stock up on tats, beer, weed, and donuts, and books from Powell's, and strip clubs. Kidding. But you never know. I feel like shit for taking that money. That impish look scares me. Care for a midnight swim? The Blackwell pool is ours. Swimming? You want to take that risk now? It's been a cray week. We deserve a little mindless fun in the water. We're done for the night anyway. We're rich and nobody busted us. So? Splish splash? You're right. We hella deserve it. Splish splash. Did you actually just say hella? I think I'm a good bad influence on you. We're in the otter's lair. Big fucking deal. I want that heated water. We still have to play it cool, okay? I still go to school here. You can own this hellhole once you figure out your rewind power. Chloe is so psyched for girls' night out, so I better follow her evil plan. Boys or girls? Girls, of course. Girls? Ooh la la. Let me check to see if the pool's heated. I hope the otters will survive. If only I could solve the mystery of the missing cat picks. I actually don't have the time to investigate this caper. Okay, let's go and have a look around the locker room. Start this side, work our way all the way around. Graffiti. The wit, it burns. Kate's locker. A bus ticket? Was she going to run away? Like Rachel Amber? Flippers in a swimming pool? 
Are they training Navy frogmen here? Those look like the most cozy, comfy towels in towel history. Want. So, Victoria's secret is selfies. Go fuck your... No. Jefferson said, don't confuse art with the artist. These are cool shots. What is this? T-shirts? Those are some musty-ass old shirts. Yuck. Looks like Brooke wants to go to the drive-in with Warren. Hope so, friend. Well, we care, dickhead. This isn't a desperate cry for attention or anything. Ooh, pink goo. I see why everybody brings their own soap. Sorry, Rachel. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> you wish, Max. You just look like a snoop. Have a look around in Typhink. If I can find anything to take a picture of. I can go in here now, boys. Let's have a look in the boys. Huh, oh, it's nice to know Victoria loves something besides herself. Welcome to 1950. I bet you do. I guess I should consider this evolution. Dana, I know I'm an a-hole, but I still care about you, love Logan. I guess somebody forgot their Blackwell spirit. Some poor hipster lost their vape. Betty developed that in Jefferson's class. But why? No way am I touching Zach's jersey. It's okay for Nathan to be hooked on these drugs, right? Nope. Not at all. Should not be hooked on drugs. Sometimes. Boys locker room is right. That's one there, ain't there? Diana needs a baby daddy. What's that one say? 69 reasons to bang Rachel Lambert. Oh, God. Bros will be bros. Certainly. 
Chloe just couldn't wait to splish splash in the pool. Max, try to find the light for the pool. I want to see the sharks. Otters don't like sharks. They bite. So do I. Hit that light. She couldn't have done this herself. Making me do it. There has to be a control panel for the lights around here. Yeah, I'll bring it off, ink, isn't it? Booyah! Yes, we get it. Otters. If we can see more things now, the lights are on. Time to do or die, Max. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Feels like a hot tub. With my cash dash, I'm queen of the world. Bow. Tell me you're not gonna stand there watching me like a zombie. Don't you dare! Come stop me, hippie. Okay, you asked for it. Cowabunga! Why, look, an otter in my water. Dun 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 dun. You are so obvious. And I still get freaked out by that movie, so stop. I can't even watch any of those shark shows. <laughs> I'll just rewind and harpoon you. Otter's revenge. Cheater. Yeah, you wouldn't know about that. <laughs> I wish Rachel was here. She would totally love being in here at night. Wish you guys had met each other. We will. With all this stuff going on, I'm starting to think everything is related. And I want to find out for Kate's sake. She almost died today. Your power is changing everything, Max. Especially you. I can already tell. You're not so chicken shit anymore. Thanks, girlfriend. You know what I mean. You're becoming like this force of nature. More like luck of nature. Come on, my power failed trying to rescue Kate. Maybe I'm just stumbling back and forth in time. For what reason? You didn't stumble when you saved me, Max. Not that time. But that's because you were there to kickstart my power. So it's time to start moving forward in time. And we're obviously connected since without me you would have never discovered your power, right? Absolutely. You make me feel like I know what I'm doing. And you make me feel like I have a reason for still being in Arcadia Bay. I hope so. Stop being so goddamn humble. You're like the smartest, most talented person I've ever known. More than Rachel Amber? Dude, I'm not her groupie, okay? And I'm sure you have Blackwell bros all over you. Like Warren. You're the bro killer. <laughs> Tats and two. You did not just say that. Plus, I am not down with these Arcadia Bay hillbillies. I don't blame you. Anyway, we have bigger fish to fry, right? No worries. Once you get over yourself, you're gonna make the world bow. As long as you're there with me. Don't look so sad. I'm never leaving you. Now I'm getting cold in here. Because we're yapping instead of attacking each other, otter versus shark style. I uh, think I've had my pool experience for the year. Let's jump. Let's call it a draw. I'm gonna freeze my ass off when I get out. Just went swimming in Chlorine Bay. You look cute with your hair soaked in chemicals. 
Thanks. You would know. Hide. Uh oh. Move, Max. Don't waste your power on getting bust. You're shitting me. Dude, hide. Like when we were kids. I could use my power. Or just look for a hiding spot. Or both. Where are they? Hello? Don't you come in now, 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 keep going. But gruff. Better not try any Halloween pranks after today. I'm serious. I heard something over here. Who's here? Oh, jeez. We are so invisible. Let's bail. Bullshit. You can't go back to your dorm now. You're a Blackwell fugitive. Crash at my place tonight. You want me to crash where the Blackwell security officer I just busted lives so I'll be safe? Okay. Into the car! Get in! Finally escaped. Not a bad episode. Right, I'm actually going to finish this one here, guys. Now I've got a chance. And in the next one, we'll start with this, taking a selfie.
So, thank you all for watching, and until next time, take care.